Hi, this is Guy Wallace with a short video on performance-based lesson mapping using a method and a format that I first came up with for a client project back in 1990. If there's one takeaway from this video, it would be this. Info, demo, and apo. The second takeaway would be apo, demo, and info. That'll make sense by the end of this video. Let's dive in. This video is about both analysis data and design data. First of all, in analysis, we focus on what are the outputs of performance? What are the tasks that are performed? And what are the enabling knowledge and skills? In design, we're focused on, well, what are the performance objectives and learning objectives? What are the application exercises for practice and feedback? What demonstrations are necessary of the performance and what information, the minimal amount of information, is necessary to enable people to understand the demonstrations and perform well in the application exercises. For a narrow focus on one or just a few output and task sets, you can do lesson mapping on the fly by asking a series of questions. This will start the lesson map format and ask these questions with master performers and other subject matter experts, one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting. It's all about information, demonstration, and application. The instructional delivery flow is information, generally followed by demonstration, and then followed by application application exercises for practice and feedback. But the instructional design flow, in the way I approach this, in the way I was taught to do instructional design, starting back in 1979, was to start with the application exercises for practice and or testing. And then, what are the demonstrations necessary to prepare the learner for those application exercises? And then what minimal information is required so that the demonstrations will make sense and learners will successfully be able to practice with feedback in the application exercises. For a broader focus on a complex job and or a process with outputs and task sets, you would first identify the areas of performance, and then produce performance model charts, and then knowledge and skill matrices that would inform a series of lesson maps. Performance modeling, in the way I approach this, is to first identify what I call the areas of performance. They're also known as major duties or key results areas or accomplishments, many, many different names for this concept of first doing a work breakdown structure, if you will, of the performance. Then you produce a performance model chart or many on each area of performance where you identify what are the key outputs, what are their measures, what are their tasks, what are the various roles and responsibilities. And then you can do a gap analysis against what are the typical performance gaps where the outputs, measures aren't met by most of the target audience. You could be going for atypical performance gaps, but I limit it to typical performance gaps because this is where most people are struggling. And whether I'm dealing with incumbents or new hires, it's important to understand where is the performance not easy to master. Then we can begin to look at the probable gap causes and we can differentiate those probable gap costs between deficiencies of the process itself, environmental supports, the individual's knowledge and skills, or other attributes and values of the individual. Next, we systematically derive the enabling knowledge and skills. I use 17 different knowledge and skill categories to derive the knowledge and skills as necessary but not all projects require me using all 17, but there have been a few over the past 40 years that I've been using this methodology. 
In this example, we're looking at marketplace knowledge, category six, and we're linking it back to the area of performance, A, territory planning. We can also identify whether or not the knowledge and skills that are necessary for performance are something that we select for or are left for training. We can identify the criticality, high, medium, or low, the difficulty to learn, high, medium, or low, the volatility of that content, high, medium, or low, and to what depth we might need to take the instruction, performance guides, and or learning experiences, whether we need to just cover it at an awareness level, at a deeper knowledge level, or whether there will be skills to be practiced with feedback in order to develop performance competence on that knowledge and skill item alone. The performance data then leads to the knowledge and skill data, which then leads to what I call lesson maps. I always start my lesson maps with the performance objectives followed by the learning objectives. Sometimes they are very much one in the same, but the focus has got to be on performance competence, the ability to perform tasks to produce outputs to stakeholder requirements. That's what I intend to accomplish with a lesson. The next thing we do is focus on, well, what are the application exercises? Will there be more than one? Will the final one be a performance test, if you will, that we can use to demonstrate the person's ability to perform back on the job because we've given them authentic application exercises that reflect, that reflect the necessary knowledge and skills capabilities applied to the performance tasks to produce outputs. Next, we identify whether or not we need a demonstration. Depending on the learner's prior knowledge, they may or may not need a demonstration. If they've been on the job for six months, then they probably know what the performance looks like, and we can skip a demonstration because we do not need to demystify that prior to an authentic application exercise. After that, we identify what are the knowledge and skill items that are necessary to set up the demonstration and the application exercises. It's all about info, demo, and APO. Back in 1990, my clients at Illinois Bell had experienced my facilitated group process for two different curriculum architecture design projects I had done for them. They now had a need for a very contentious project on labor relations for new supervisors, where the training function found themselves caught in between disagreements between the labor relations function and field operations. Labor relations wanted something that was pretty much considered the same old, same old approach to labor relations, but field operations knew that that was not effective and they wanted something very different. They wanted something focused on performance and my clients at Illinois Bell knew that I was focused on performance and then enabling knowledge and skills, such as the enabling knowledge and skills of labor relations. I created the original lesson map format, calling it a lesson specification sheet. In it, the information demonstration application was originally called lecture, demonstration, and exercise. This was intended to be a group-paced, instructor-led training session for Illinois Bell. This soon became the lesson map with a focus on information, demonstration, and application because that made more sense for both group-paced, coached, or self-paced instruction, which is how I identify the three different modes of instruction that I might produce for my clients. My goal is always to get the learners into the APOs as soon as possible and minimize information and demonstration. And my goal is to save that time so that I can do more than one application exercise. I have two books written on this recently. In 2021, I produced performance-based lesson mapping and instructional development then, 
using a facilitated group process. But the next year, I produced a mini book that focuses simply on lesson mapping for performance impact. This is all part of my packed processes for performance-based, accelerated, customer and stakeholder-driven training and performance guides. Thank you for watching this short video on performance-based lesson mapping. Remember, info, demo, and APO, and also APO, demo, and info. Focus on the performance requirements and enable them. Thank you.